Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 10th of October. Uh, new videos this week. I completed the DevOps Masterclass, so part eight, all about monitoring and feedback, a key part of that continual improvement and value process. So we kind of complete the DevOps Masterclass. Then there have been a lot of questions about what are availability zones, what they aren't, so I kind of go into the detail about them in that video. As always, if this is useful, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. So new features this week. So on the compute side, the Azure VMware solution has a number of updates. So it's now available in Brazil South and East US too. So remember, this is the VMware private clouds running in Azure data centers. Really useful if, hey, I'm running a VMware today, I really just wanna quickly get that out of my data center to the cloud. I don't wanna to have to learn Azure as such, I don't wanna to have to retool. Also, HCX Enterprise Edition is now available. So HCX is part of that kind of migration solution for VMware, and this is the premium, the Enterprise Edition. This ad something called Replication Assisted vMotion. So if you think about ordinarily, I wanna move a VM from on-premises to basically VMware running in Azure. Well, I, I can do that process, but it's really kind of a, a machine at a time. What the enterprise version and this Replication Assisted vMotion does, really combines two things together. It has the vSphere replication capability and then the vMotion capability in a single VM migration step. So I can schedule large scale migrations, multiple machines using this. And what it will do is initially use disk replication to seed the disk up in the Azure VMware solution. Then it will use Delta replication to keep them synchronized, i.e. continuous replication. And then a final vMotion of the final data on disk and the VM state as well. So it kind of gives me those capabilities. Then there's mobility optimized networking. This really extends networks from NSXT, the VMware software defined data center, to when I'm using kind of my on-premises and the private clouds in AVS, I'm gonna get optimal routing, um, make sure it's symmetric routing um, between those different clouds. And there's some special promotions around this. Um, availability zones are now available in South Africa North and Korea Central. Remember, I did a whole video about those. Those are those independent power calling networking to give me extra resilience for the workloads that I distribute over the three availability zones that are available in my subscription. Azure Functions now has Python 3.9 support. And also, it now has dynamic concurrency in preview. So if you think about a function is serverless, it's triggered by something. Well, I can run functions as part of a plan, so I have a certain set of resources. But if I have a certain set of resources, it's very common to have multiple invocations of a function, multiple triggers happening. Well, how many concurrent invocations do we allow? Previously, I could set a static concurrency. But what I can now do in preview is a dynamic concurrency. It's gonna look at, hey, what are the resources available? What's the load pattern and tune how many concurrent instances I can have based on what it's kind of learned about the environment. On the storage side, so for Azure NetApp Files, remember this is the ability to have native NetApp storage running in the Azure data centers offering NFS and SMB file-based services. There's different performance offerings. I create an account, which is kind of like this administrative grouping of capacity pools, which are a certain type and provision size. Then I create volumes in that capacity pool. So with now the Azure NetApp files, there's no more wait list. So while it was GA, there was a finite amount of resource. So when you wanted to use it, there was a wait list. Well, that wait list has gone. You can just go and onboard to it, portal, PowerShell, whatever. It now has a backup to blob capability in preview. So NetApp ONTAP has native snapshot capability, storing it on the ONTAP filers. But obviously there's a certain cost element to Azure NetApp files, whereas regular blob is cheaper. 
So what this actually lets me do is I can take those backups, those snapshots, and move them to blob storage. I can still have those delta based, so it's just the delta, the changes actually going to the blob storage. And even though it's a delta offload, I can restore it as a single action back to a, a new NetApp volume. Um, I can do this manual, I can schedule these. So now I can take those snapshots, back it up to blob. And NFS data stores for AVS has been announced. So it's not out yet. I think there's a private preview, but this will actually let me have those for Azure VMware solution, be able to use NFS file shares actually running on Azure NetApp files. And there's now standard networking features in preview. So when I use Azure NetApp files, what it actually does is it uses a delegated subnet in my virtual network. So with the basic network integration, it puts certain limitations on the virtual network in terms of the number of IPs it could support, I think it was less than a thousand, didn't support NSGs, didn't support UDRs. It also restricted certain types of VPN connectivity, didn't support fast path. So now when I actually go and do that deployment of a volume, I can say standard networking. So now it will have the same number of kind of IPs for regular virtual machines. So I don't have to do any kind of strange network architectures. It supports network security groups, so I can restrict the flow. It supports UDRs, so I can send traffic to a certain hop, maybe an appliance on the way. It also now gives me support for active active VPN gateways. It supports express route fast path. Remember, fast path is where the ingress coming into the VNet doesn't actually go via the gateway. I still have a gateway for the BGP sort of communications, but this removes some latency for that. I still only have one delegated subnet per virtual network, but remember I can have multiple volumes using the same delegated subnet anyway. So a lot of kind of improvements all around Azure NetApp files. Then miscellaneous, obviously Windows 11 released. Uh, much fanfare, yes, I'm running Windows 11. A key tip, uh, make sure some of the taskbar settings have gone away. You can make it left the line, but if you right click on the start button or you do Windows X key, it does bring up that power menu. So you do have a lot of the old options available in that, so that can be super useful. But if you want to download it, maybe you've not been offered it, you should just see it now anyway. But if you haven't seen it, you can go to this site and it's in the download links as always, but you can kind of click this download now you can create installation media, you can download a Windows 11 disk image. So it's easy to go and kick that off if you want to. I'm running it on this studio machine, and here's that start button, I've got it in the middle, but if I right click, I get that power menu so I can easily now get to task manager and all those kind of good things there as well. But yeah, I mean, I've not had any problems with it so far, <laughs> touch wood, um, so if you wanna go and start using it, it's out there. Uh, go upgrade. Back to features. So if we actually, with that Windows 11 release, what we also now have is Azure Virtual Desktop. Remember that is the VDI as a service solution now supports Windows 11. So that's both for desktops and application hostings where I just send the basically pixels of the app rather than a full desktop. I can now run those on Windows 11. There's a Windows 11 Enterprise image, there's a Windows 11 Enterprise multi-session image. Remember, that's where I can have multiple users connecting to the same client OS, which is something unique to Azure Virtual Desktop. And there's a Windows 11 Enterprise with Microsoft 365 apps. Very similar, Windows 365 Enterprise, should have stressed that, now has Windows 11 support as well. So Windows 365 is really that desktop as a service. It, it removes even the relative complexity of Azure Virtual Desktop, so it's really just clicks to get this thing. I don't even really think about profiles anymore or many things at all. So that Enterprise Edition, where it integrates with a virtual network, um, now I have that Windows 11 support as well available to me. They announced a new AZ305 exam. So this is all about kind of the architect certification, that expert certification. And what's happened here is previously you would pass AZ303 and AZ304. But there was a lot of overlap between kind of the 303 and the Azure Administrator exam. 
So what they're actually doing is that they're changing up. Now I wanna stress straight away, this does not change the process if you already have your architect certification. Big stress point on this. If you have the architect cert already, doesn't apply to you. You'll just do those annual kind of renewal things online, nothing changes. If you don't have your architect certification, well, once this goes live, which I think they're saying is November the 16th in beta, well, now I can get my architect expert certification by taking the Azure Administrator exam and then this new AZ305. Um, the AZ303 and AZ304 will retire 31st of March, 2022. So I could also take AZ303 and AZ305. And if you're currently in the middle of your studying, hey, you can still do AZ303 and 304 up until the end of March and get your architect cert. So I'll do a, probably a little video going through this in a bit more detail. So again, if you have the architect cert, doesn't change anything, you'll just carry on doing that annual renewal as you have been, but they're just switching it up. I think really it makes more sense. There's not such an overlap in the curriculum. So now I just do Azure Admin, and then I do the AZ305, and I get my architect certification. Um, Azure Security Center had their October update. So if we go and look at that quickly, it's gonna open for me today, there we go. So basically the Microsoft Threat and Vulnerability Management added as a vulnerability assessment solution. So that's really a better integration between Azure Defender and kind of that Defender for Endpoint to support all the different vulnerability assessments. You can auto enable them as part of Azure Security, just like you could enable Log Analytics. Hey, I can go and enable that vulnerability assessment and I get to pick, hey, do I wanna use the Qualys powered one or this now Microsoft Threat and Vulnerability Management solution. There are now filters available for my asset inventory to make it easier to go and see kind of what apps I actually have and which ones I wanna see. Some alert types have been renamed from ARM to VM and it kind of goes through a whole big list of those. And then back in September, there were just two new recommendations about OS configs. So those were there as well. Back to our kind of list. Finally, um, Azure Monitor Container Insights had some updates. So they've done a few things with the layout. So it's got about kind of a better view now from small form factor, like little tablets, maybe phones. But also now, some of the resource utilization will actually show as allocatable capacity. AKS itself, reserves a certain amount of capacity on the nodes. So you might say, hey, look, there's 40% free, but in reality, you could only use maybe 15% of that because it reserves a certain amount. So now it will actually show you that allocatable capacity um, as an option. There are also some new metrics and fixes on some recommended alerts. There are new average container CPU percentage alerts, 95% on these new counters, um, new working set counters, new persistent volume usage counters. So they've changed some of the counters around and just now the alerts are off of these new counters that is added to that container insights. And that's it. So those are all the updates. Um, hopefully people are at least playing with Windows 11. Again, I upgraded all of my machines. So far, no pain. The only challenge I faced was I couldn't turn the clock off, um, but messing around with that, seeing what we could do there. But so far, it seems great. But uh, until next week, everyone, take care.